Hello. 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 Let's get connected to some Apple TV real quick. Let's fix some resolution stuff real quick. Uh, so that's okay. All right. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about Beaver Builder. Uh, Beaver Builder, for me, makes me look like I'm a genius when it comes to design stuff. You are a genius. Um, but I'm not. <laughs> so what I do is I take, I work at a church and I take all of our designs from people that essentially use Photoshop and Illustrator and they take that stuff and send it over to me and then they go, okay, make that show up on the website. And so I have to figure out how to get that to show up on the website, look like that. So there's a bunch of tools to do that, but we won't really get into any of those things. What I'm going to show you is kind of like how to take the scaffolding, the pieces that are going to make your site work and you know be built up and take those things and have them uh, show up on the site. Earlier, you were asking how much things cost. So um, Beaver Builder is uh, 99 bucks out the gate, then 199 and then 399 um, I asked the people over at Beaver Builder for a discount, and so we got a 10% off discount. I don't work for them or anything like that. I just, you, you ask developers for discounts and they may give you a discount. So there you go. You go to uh, beaverbuilder.com slash OCWP and you'll get 10% off. Yeah. And I'll show that at the end if you guys are like, ooh, I still want to get that. All right, so Beaver Builder. Um, Beaver Builder kind of has like its own, um, its own following now. Like it's getting to the point now where there's just a lot of people that are getting involved in this thing and really want to use it. And um, I enjoy it just because there's a community that's involved in it. Instead of you just you know, buying the software and then not actually getting any support or getting support only from the people that work there and not from your peers or anything like that. So that's why, that's why I like Beaver Builder. Um, that and it functions really well and looks great. So I'll show you guys that right now. So I'm running desktop server. I'm going to log in real quick to a local install. All right. So Beaver Builder, there's you could pretty much use Beaver Builder on any. Um, clean up a little bit here. You can pretty much use Beaver Builder on any uh, uh, any website you want that's running WordPress, and you could also run uh, Beaver Builder's um, own theme and child theme if you like. Um, that's the way I'm going to show you today, but also I'll also show you how you can do that on um, on. Uh, any other theme you like. So here's the front page of the website. Super duper basic. There's nothing going on there. And Beaver Builder lets you manipulate the um, both the, the pages as well as the posts. But out, um, out of the box, it only does posts. So if we go over to the, um, I'm not going to show you how to install a plugin or anything like that. I think you guys kind of figured out how to do that part of it. And if not, their website totally explains that. But what you'll end up with is uh, down here on the bottom under settings you'll have a page builder link to go to and once you go in there you can see uh, the, um, the various ways that you can go into setting up Beaver Builder. So you install your license key, here's all the different modules that are involved in it and we'll kind of go through a bunch of those. Um, you have templates the post types, which like I was saying, pages is the one that is um, is kind of built in. Uh, if you turn on posts, then you'll have access to making changes to posts. Um, it includes uh, font awesome, foundation icons, and uh, WP uh, dash icons, and so on and so forth. It has its own caching built in, so if you ever have any weird issues, you come in here and just blow out the cache and it should clean up. I run um, sites both on Pagely as well as uh, WP Engine and never had to push this button. So if you absolutely have to, that's where you can do it. So let's go into um, how to kind of start using it. Um, what you need to do if you go look at the welcome page here is it tells you that you need to make a page and um, start editing that page. I'm assuming you're probably going to want to make like your first front page and have that be customized. So let's go and create a page real quick. And you'll notice that right here, 
they added a new tab called uh, Page Builder. You click on that and it'll turn on the Page Builder feature. If you've used Visual Composer or any of the other ones that are out there, you're going to think, like, I'm going to click this and then you're going to be modifying everything within this page. Not here. So, what ends up happening is you click on Page Builder and it'll take you to the front side of the page where you can start manipulating the page itself. So this is my first time loading up the page, or loading up uh, Beaver Builder. It's asking me what template do I want to use. So if you're somebody who has no design skills whatsoever, this guy right here, um, you can go in here and pick one of these things and then start changing up as much as you want. Um, Beaver Builder started out with uh, a few of these and then they slowly but surely have added more. Um, but once you get into like the home page or the content pages, or um, actual templates you make yourself, you can um, start really building a, a fully custom looking set of pages. So let's go to home page real quick and let's pick something that um, is pretty standard here. Uh, let's go with this guy right here. So it'll show you, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so um, can I get out of this crazy mode here. So what ends up happening is you have on the right hand side um, a, a new sidebar, kind of a flyout sidebar that you can uh, then click on and drag stuff out. You can also move your mouse on top of any of these elements and it'll show you kind of an editing box that you can mess with. Now, Beaver Builder is a page builder, which means that the only things that, the only things that you can manipulate within the page are anything that comes out of uh, like WP content. So that part that gets displayed, that's the area that you're modifying. There's a way around it by um, using a template that doesn't have a header or a footer or anything, and you have like the full page to work with. So there's that. So let's pretend that we want to edit this, page, this, this section here and do something interesting with it. So we'll just click on it, and we'll get a, a header settings screen here. And all these windows are movable, and you can do whatever you need to with it. If you're trying to reference something that's on the page, you can kind of move it around. Um, so let's say you wanted to change some of this text here. It actually changes on the fly as you're typing it. So you can see how it looks, make changes to it, um, you know, those sorts of things. I'm going to get into really good design here in just a minute because okay. it's going to be beautiful. Um, do you want to change custom fonts, any of that stuff? Now what's neat about this is if you're the CSS type, you can also go and put in your ID as well as your classes so you can define those and then use those um, outside of here and have it, you know, actually use those rules that are in that CSS. So you can do that. Um, animations, if you wanted to have it fade in or fade out or do any of those kind of fun things, you can definitely do that. And uh, any of the margins, you can do this stuff all from within here. So you're not doing this stuff outside in CSS. You can just do it here and manipulate just that one specific area. So we've gone through kind of general, and then style, and then advanced. Um, Beaver Builder gives you the kind of the ability to make changes to the um, responsive layout. So if you wanted to, you could have it so that this particular set of text here will only be displayed on small devices or on medium devices or large or whatever. So you can kind of customize the way it's gonna look and hide things that just aren't necessary on mobile if you don't want them to be displayed. Um, so with this, that's just manipulating that one particular section. Now if you wanted to, you could actually save this section as a template. And this becomes kind of a little module that you can then grab and drag out. So you could build out a whole, say like a, pr a pricing list or something, drag that in, make the changes to that pricing list, and then drag in another one and make another set of those without having to rebuild the entire section. So the way you would do that is, say like this whole header right here that consists of this text, as well as a graphic and all these things. If you go up here and click on the this row uh, settings area here, go down to save as. We can call this header um, 
So you can call this like header, you know, header image area or something. Then you can define whether or not this is going to be used globally or just on this particular page. If you set globally, it'll be used, made available on any page that's there, where the non-global would just be for this particular page. So we'll hit save. And it'll say that I've saved the template. Now if I go over to the side and add content, actually, under templates. Nope, I messed up here. So, sorry. Okay, so if you go under, um, if you go over to the right hand side and go to save rows, you can then drag out this row and drop it. And now we'll have double the amount of stuff. It's kind of nifty. So we can delete it and it'll just blow it away. Now we only have one. So all these elements can be moved around and changed however you want. So if you wanted to make everything kind of flip-flop this whole page, you can grab it, grab it and move it, and then let go, grab this side, move it, and then let go, and now I have pretty much a flip-flop this whole page, nice and easy, including like if you wanted it down there or if you wanted it over there, whatever you want, you can kind of just move these things around. So it's kind of neat to be able to move things quickly and easily without having to write a whole bunch of code that's going to say this div's going to live over here and this div's going to live over here and here's all the content that's going to be within it. So let's go and add some more content. So if we go back up to add content, there's a whole bunch of stuff we could add in here. So for instance, if we wanted to add a column, say like uh, five columns right here, we can click and drag and dra drag out one of these five columns and the five columns will show up here. Let's say I wanted to add a photo in one of these. I could just drag it and drop it. And then the photos show up. That's awesome. And then I can say, oh, I want to add a photo. And go in here, and I don't have any photos. But you can just add a photo in there and have it be displayed. Let's go, we'll add, uh, well, this little beaver dude. Why not, right? So we got a beaver. So let's say we wanted to duplicate this over and over and over again. I can just go here, click on the little duplicate button, grab the beaver, move the beaver over, drop the beaver, done. Let's say that I only had three photos instead of six. Well, I can go in here and say, well, I only have three of these. I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove the, these last two over on the right hand side. So I can um, tell it to delete this particular column, or I can go over here and tell it to delete this particular column. Uh, let's see here, so we can say, we'll delete this one. And we can delete that one, and we'll duplicate this guy real quick. So you can move these things and change them and do it super fast. Is it making three images or just references to the same in image? Uh, reference to the same image, yeah. Can you change their size? You sure can. So pretty much any of these things have little handles on it. So you can grab one of these handles and move it if you wanted to do it that way. And that's manipulating the columns themselves, the width of the column. If you wanted the image to be changed, you can go in here and say, I only want this image to be, um, well, was kind of, was, well, I guess you can do it if you had, yeah, you can do it this way by using the image selector and picking which, which size image. So if you already had one defined, you can do that. So you can see how this one's a little bit smaller than that one. So yeah, that's how you kind of move those things around and manipulate that. Uh, what else is neat is you can drag in, um, you can drag in widgets. So if you have a, a widget that you use a lot, you can actually go and grab a WordPress widget Let's say you wanted to show the calendar, which is a very popular one, right? And we'll go ahead and have the calendar in here. Now the calendar widget shows up. All I did was just drag and drop. So I just pick one of these and say, I want to display the archives of the website. Since there's not a whole lot of content on here, it shows you the archive. So what's neat about doing all this stuff is that you get tired of having this thing on here. You just click on it and say delete, and poof, it's gone. 
didn't have to do any coding, didn't have to do anything special, and if you want to make it look pretty or whatever, slap some CSS on it using the class, and you're good to go. Um, other things that you could do is um, they have built-in modules that are kind of pre-built for Beaver Builder, and they're constantly adding, adding these, heading onto this list all the time. So they have an audio module that you could do that it, yeah. you select what, you know, either selecting from uh, the media library or as a link, and then have the audio show up there, um, as well as having an advanced tab with some changes that you can make in there. There's, um, there's plenty of other stuff. Audio, a button, where it uh, looks like an actual button. You can pick the colors you want, whatever you want. So if we go in here, we can style our button, have a red background, and have it so when you hover over it, it'll be some crazy green color or something. And then we'll hit save. So now when I hover over it, it'll be crazy green color. So there's those things. Um, if you wanted to uh, add a video in here, you could you know, just drag one of these videos out here, select the video file format that you wanted, and do it that way. Or you can put an embed code, and it'll put the embed code in there, and it'll do that too. So it's great, because it's like, for people that are not developers, this is kind of perfect for, for them. Now, obviously, you could totally muck this thing up like super quick, and accidentally drag and drop things and blow the whole thing up, but works works pretty good. Um, other stuff you can do in here is, you know, I've seen Steve show these pricing tables where it's like, oh, these are these are really great. You know, you, know, you want to describe how much something costs and what the pricing is and what have you. Um, go in here, say per year, hit save, and now I have a $5 per year box that shows up on there, and you can add other boxes with graphics on top of it, and all that sort of thing. So that's just out of the box Beaver Builder, um, doing, you know, subscribe forms or tabs or any of those sorts of things, are all things that can just be built straight out of this without having to do a whole lot of any extra coding or anything like that. So. Beaver Builder out of the box does a bunch of stuff. There's actually third parties that have um, tied into this and have started making their own modules. Yeah. So let's just say, as a developer, maybe you want to um, provide this for your client who a use case would be, um, you know, builds a lot of landing pages for different campaigns, right? And wants that flexibility to just do things on the fly. Sure. Um, will Beaver Builder absorb a lot of the global styles, like um, button colors, typography, uh, things like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is there, does that happen out of the box? or? Um, well, it, as long as whatever Beaver Builder calls the button or the... The class name? Yeah, those class names that are built in. Yeah. As long as those match up, then yeah, you're, you're fine. Cool. So if you're building Beaver Builder websites and you're like, oh, I want to take this particular CSS and apply it to the site and then make some changes to it, you definitely could do that. Cool. And they come, they, their documentation explains what all of the different, um, uh, the, all the different classes and IDs and stuff are called. Or if someone built me a site, right, on the site, um, um, I won't break some of the global styles. Like all of a sudden, these buttons are green where they're, the rest of my site's buttons are blue. Oh, I see. Um, Beaver Builder has its own its own uh, uh, um, its own prefixes for all of its stuff. So, yeah, it lives within its own thing. Plus, it's only modifying just that particular page that you have the page builder installed on. So, yeah. anything that doesn't have a page builder installed on, it leaves it alone. Where's the sorry? No, go ahead. Now, where's the documentation though that tells you the codes and stuff? And yeah, it's all on their website. Um, I don't work for them, so I have no idea, but it's uh, on the website. Say, yeah, there's like knowledge base and then uh, yeah, CSS. Yeah, it's in here somewhere. Yeah, you'll have to dig around, but it's, it's okay. definitely on there. 
They also have all the hooks and all the filters and all the stuff that they use to do this. So if you want to do this stuff programmatically, you can definitely do that too. So their knowledge base is ridiculously awesome, as well as their support center, which is where everybody goes in there and asks questions and looks for help and shares their knowledge and stuff. So it's really good. Plus, they have a Facebook group so if you want to get involved in that. It's the exact same type of thing where people are sharing information or, hey, I built this website, or how can I build this website using Beaver Builder? That's the way to do it. I was going to show you guys the. Um... Now, with respect to responsive design, yep. it, I think I saw a page in there where it looks like they recognize uh, that it's mobile friendly, tablet friendly, and stuff like that. Oh, when yeah. you're creating your pages, is there any special syntax you have to do in order to have one look underneath a you know, certain display and another look underneath another display? Yeah, so the way that they do it is by um, giving you the. Um, Giving the giving you the ability to select down here. Oh. So down here on the bottom, it says responsive layout. How do you want this to? How do you want this particular element to be displayed? Do you want this element to only show up on large, only on medium, or only on small? So you come up with separate pages for each type of display. No, type. separate elements. elements. So if you wanted okay. to have oh, oh, okay. one that's one and one that's the other. As you, as the admin, looking at it, you'll see duplicate pieces. So there. basically, on a computer display, you might have three columns, whereas on a uh, mobile display, you take that same element and maybe stack it or something like right. that. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Columns has the exact same type. And of so setup the in system here. will hide it according to what display it's being. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Including like if you had a graphic that's there and you wanted the graphic to be a more simple a simple version of the graphic, or maybe it's not a horizontal graphic and you want a vertical one or you want a square or something, you just have two different elements that live on the page. One's one and one's the other and it displays it. I don't do a whole lot of that. Um, most of the stuff just kind of works out of the box. I haven't really had to made, make a whole lot of changes to get it to work exactly for mobile. Um, a lot of our elements that we do at our church is the very, you know, just like wide graphics, a couple blocks on top of it, more wide graphics, a couple blocks on top of it. And so all those stack nicely because we're thinking about it before we're building it. Makes sense. 